How's it going everyone? In today's video, I wanted to go over Gatsby and Elementor and how they might work together. I wanna to try and get the drag and drop experience out of Elementor and then the performance out of Gatsby. So this is gonna be a couples part series video. In this first one, we're just gonna be going over just kind of the getting started and let's get some content on the page and then we'll kind of progress from there. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's start off with what plugins I'm using. I've got a local copy of WordPress up and running and we're using three plugins. We're using Elementor because that's what we want to replicate. We have WP GraphQL and then WP Graphical. Graphical? I think that's how you say it. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a page with Elementor, taking a look at its data structure, and then see how we might be able to get that into WP GraphQL. Once we get that in WP GraphQL, we will then uh, start parsing it and get it into a Gatsby site. So I will put links down in the description for all three of those. So if you want to follow along, you can, you can get that. So let's start off by creating a page a post rather, and let's just drag in an image. So we'll change that image to something I have here in my media library, and we're going to publish this page. So up here in the URL bar, it says we have post number 35. So we're going to jump over to our SQL Pro, go to the post meta, and then we're going to type in for the, uh, try and get the post ID of 35. So this last row right here is Elementor data. And this is one of the nice things about Elementor is that it stores the entire page structure inside of a JSON object for you in the database. So you can pull this out and do whatever you want with it. So this is what we're gonna try and get into WP GraphQL. So let's start off by jumping back into our WordPress site and pull up Graphical so we can make sure that once we attempt to get it into GraphQL, that we are actually getting it there. So let's open up the Explorer. And what we wanna do is we wanna go find post by, and we wanna find it by post ID. And it was, what was it? It was ID of 35. So we're gonna type in 35 here. And right now we can just have, you know, get whatever we want. We can get the title, let's get the title the content and hit go. And then all of a sudden we get a bunch of HTML that Elementor also stores in the post content. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we get that JSON object in there because that's gonna be way easier to consume than this content right here. So let's actually just get rid of that because it's kind of muddying up the thing. So the nice thing about WP GraphQL is it has an easy interface to extend. So what I wanna do is I wanna jump over to our WordPress installation here. We're gonna to go to app and public, WP content and themes, and we have 2019 activated. So let's open up functions.php. And let me just grab this snippet that I have over here. And this is all you need. That's, this will get us uh, Elementor data in here. So what we're doing is we're adding a new action to GraphQL registers types. If you have WP GraphQL installed, you'll have this action you can hook onto. Then there's a special function that's also becomes available called register GraphQL field and what object you want to attach it to, in this case, post. What you want to name it, which we're going to name it Elementor data, give it a type, a description, and then resolve, which is callback for whatever. You can hit an API, you can do whatever you want here. But in this case, all we wanna do is grab that row out of the database and shove it into GraphQL as a string. So we're getting the post meta, we are grabbing that Elementor data out of there, and we are saying true because we want it to come back as a single thing and returning it. So if we hit save, we go back here, let's just refresh the page, and let's see if we have Elementor data, which we do. So we can hit play here, let me get out of there. And then we have that string. So this allows us to jump into Gatsby and then start consuming this. So let's do that. So let's go over to our terminal here, I'll make this full screen, 
and let's make it huge so everyone can see it. So let's go to my dev, just clear that out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Gatsby new, and let's just call this Elementor test. And so we're gonna let it do all of its things and get the starter default for Gatsby. So I'm gonna pause the video and let this just do its thing and then we'll pick up where it left off. All right, so next we're going to CD into Elementor test. And then we are going to add a new source plugin because we want to be able to hit a GraphQL endpoint and then pull that data down. So what we're gonna do is do npm install Gatsby source GraphQL. So this is gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pause the video to save us some time. All right, so now that we have that in, uh, installed and ready to go, we're just gonna open up Visual Studio Code. And what we have here is just the Gatsby starter default, so there's nothing fancy going on, on here yet. So what we wanna do is we want to make sure that we are using the right source. So we're gonna make sure that we use the GraphQL source versus this file system source. So all we're doing really is just pointing it to our GraphQL endpoint that we got from WP GraphQL. And we're saying this is what the data that we care about. After that, we wanna make sure that when it does pull those things down, it's creating pages off of the WordPress posts that we made. So what we're doing here, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this so you don't have to watch me type this out all slowly and sloppily. But we're just creating pages, we're specifying a template that we care to generate off of those WordPress pages. And here is our query for those WordPress pages and we're making sure that we get the URI and the Elementor data, which we care very much about. And then we're creating pages off of the results of that query. So we're creating the same URI, so what it'll match what's in WordPress. We're creating the component, or we're specifying the component that we want to use. And then we're just shoving all the data into it from our query. So before we actually run Gatsby develop, there's a one thing that we need to make sure that we got out of here so it doesn't throw any errors. And that is here on the index.js page, it's rendering an image off of that source uh, file system source. So we just need to make sure to get rid of that and get rid of the image component just to make sure that it doesn't throw any errors here. And now that we've got that, let's run Gatsby develop. And once this goes, we should have it create a page from our WordPress site. So we should be getting, um, let's see if I can bring that over here. We should be getting um, Elementor number 35 and it should have this as the URI. So, oh yeah, we forgot to actually create, create that uh, uh, template. So let's do a new folder called templates. And let's just make sure that I'm spelling everything right. Templates, and it's gonna be blogpost.js. So let's go over to templates, new file, blogpost.js. And let's just grab index.js and use it as kind of our starter here. Let's get rid of link, we won't be using that. And let's get rid of everything in here and let's just change this to make sure that we know that this is us. And this is going to be, what did we call it? What, um, let's blog post template. So we're gonna be changing it to blog post template. And now we can run Gatsby develop. All right, so it's got us um, up and running. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this uh, browser here and we're gonna go to localhost 8000 and we need to make sure that we are going to slash elementor-35 and so we're getting our garbly gunk right here so that means that we are on the right track so we're creating pages in Gatsby off of WordPress and the next thing that we need to do is make sure that we are getting our data let's just call this data not settings and then instead of having it implicitly return let's just fix this and have it return down here. Cause I don't want, I want to be able to console log some things and we're gonna be doing a lot of logic up there. So uh, let's just console.log our data. And let's open up our terminal here. 
and we're gonna have this object. So this is where we're starting to see some of the magic, right? So we have all of that data that came in through our WordPress query. So really the one that we're wanting to check out here is this element or data. This has our page structure that we're gonna try and replicate here in Gatsby. So let's go jump back over here. We need to actually, let's see here, we need to create the uh, JSON object off of the string that we just got. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do something that looks like this. Let's get rid of this. We're not gonna jump around anymore. So we have Elementor data and we're just going to JSON parse, or we're gonna parse that into JSON. All right, so now that we have this, let's bring down console.log and let's give it Elementor data. And we're going to take this and refresh and get this object back that we have, Elementor data. So kind of the structure that we need to follow here is Elementor gives us rows and then it gives us columns for inside of those rows. And that is reflected in the structure here. So we have a section and then a column and then inside of columns is where we would find our content, our widgets, our image that we made, right? So inside of elements, it has an array of widgets. And so we're gonna need to make a, a loop that's three levels deep that's going to cover each one of those. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I have created that very loop that I'm going to bring over here. And I'm gonna explain it so you don't have to watch me type this out all messily. But what we have is we have a new variable called page. And we're going to map over the Elementor data and we're gonna be getting the rows out of there. Once we've gotten the rows and given it a key and a class name, we jump over into the columns and we are doing the same thing there. However, we are setting a special class name that comes out of the column size. So if we go up to columns and collapse its elements, it has a setting called column size. So we can see that this one's 100% width and if we were to do two columns, it would be 50. And then the both columns would be a column size of 50. So we're just going to use CSS to create a grid off of that. The next thing that we're going to do is we loop over all of the widgets inside of the columns. And this is the part that I feel like I need to spend a little bit extra time on because it was kind of a tricky little spot to be in because what we have back from Elementor is we have, if we open up Elements and we look at this widget, it tells us right here that it's an image, but there's two things that are a problem with this, is number one, that it's a string, and number two, it's lowercase. And so with JSX, JSX and React, it needs to be a React element and it needs to be Pascal case. So what I've gone ahead and done here is I have created a kind of a little helper function for our needs right here, which is um, UC words coming from the PHP land. Um, and it, all it does is just makes the first word capital for every word. So this is actually serves what we need in this case with an image. Um, and then on top of that, we need to create some sort of dictionary to tell us hey, these are the available components, and if you find something that's an image, make sure you load this component. So we actually have to create the image component. So what I've got here is a couple lines that are telling us to import the image and creating some sort of dictionary saying that we are supporting an image and it has a key and a reference to this component. So what we need to do is actually create that component. So what we're gonna do is go into components. We're gonna do a new file called image.js and we're gonna paste in this simple component. So it's going to take in some settings which will come from our uh, Elementor data and then we're just gonna grab the URL out of there. So nothing super complicated, but we are now supporting the Elementor image. Now we can come back over to blog post and we can console.log our page. Or it's gonna be capital P here. And if we go back to our P, 
page here, we can see that we now have an object that has a bunch of uh, React stuff in it, <laughs> lots of stuff. So this is good because this is, means that we can just come down here to our return and we can just say, well, we need you to render all of that, right? So come back over to Chrome and we can refresh and all of a sudden we have our image. So inside of here, if we were to, we were to inspect it, we have a row and then we have a column that's 100 wide and then we have an image source. So now we can go back to our posts and edit our original Elementor page. And we can do something like if we click in here and duplicate, oh, we don't wanna duplicate that. We wanna duplicate the column. So let's duplicate the column and we'll have two images and one with this other crazy image. And then we'll hit update. We'll come back to our uh, Gatsby and we will rerun Gatsby develop. And once while that's doing its thing, we need to come over to our CSS and let's just go to the bottom here. And let me just grab some CSS. So if we have our row and our column, we're gonna want classes for those. So if we have row, uh, we want it to display flex. If we want a column to be 100% wide, we'll give it that. And if we want it to be 50%, we'll give it something like that. So that'll match up with the classes, class names that we created for ourselves a second ago. Let's go back to Google Chrome and let's reload Gatsby here. And now we have two images side by side. So we can open up the source. And we have a row that has two columns, each 50% width with a different image inside of this. So this is concluding the first part of this series where we just basically got some stuff on the page and got some markup around it. Now there's a couple things that we still need to do. We don't have any sort of, you know, like SEO stuff going on here. And we're severely lacking in some of the performance areas because, well, these images are like three megs each and we need to be able to get them onto the page through Gatsby image and get the benefits out of there. So how we get about it will be in the next video. So if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment letting me know if this is something that is actually viable or if I'm insane, but I feel like it's a, it's a cool idea and I think that you can get that drag and drop experience out of Elementor, but the performance gains uh, from Gatsby was just a matter of getting there. So uh, like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're new here and ring the bell if you haven't already. Thanks guys, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.